Welcome back, segment three, episode 174. This is the IT in the D show. And if you haven't figured it out by now, we're broadcasting here in Podcast Detroit. Beautiful Royal Oak, Michigan's Bob the Sales Guy, Captain Soundboard, Dave the Geek, Nuri the FNG with his dapper hat on and his bow tie. Did you tie that yourself or is that a clip on? No, I tied it myself. Wow. There's a guy on YouTube that taught me how to oh, tie see? a bow tie. That's the thing. No one can learn anything anymore. Just go on YouTube. Every time now kids says, Dad, how do I just go on YouTube. YouTube? How do I do electricity? How do I do plumbing? Is it a politician who teaches that new tutorial? <laughs> no, no. Carson no. Tucker or whatever? He doesn't wear them anymore. Apparently. Oh, he doesn't? Oh, okay. No. It's actually a guy from the 1920s with a YouTube yeah. channel. Yeah. You put it on anything, you see? <laughs> um, but hey, we uh, had a fun chat with Mark Larson from Falling Down and we're talking about the charity event and uh, what a nice time. This actually, the guests actually make sense this week, Dave, for once in our lives. We actually kept a theme. Right. There's there's usually no theme. It's like <laughs> roller derby girls and hey, there's a rocket scientist that wrote code. <laughs> like, you know. um, but hey, we're joined by uh, Michael from Operation Kit Equip and thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks. Appreciate it. So we've and we've known you for a couple years now. Uh, More than a couple. Yeah, and so like one of the things that I think is interesting, and in fact, we were just yakking about this outside. We usually, you know, the, I always wind up having the conversation. Okay, well, what does this have to do with you know the holiday season and all that kind of stuff? And I said, okay, well, here's the you know Operation Kit Equip. I said, I'm sure you're familiar with you know the the backpack drives and everything that everybody else does, you know, for school supplies and that kind of stuff in the summer. Like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I told you, I'm like, yeah. Well, I said, well, go figure. Those same kids are in those same situations come holiday time, and so it's not necessarily the most festive of occasions then. Right. Uh, so yeah, we we try to help, and so and and then now you've got another component that you're adding on. So talk to me a little bit about the evolution of Operation Kit Equip and what you guys have done and are doing and are looking to do. Well, when Operation Kit Equip started, we started with providing school supplies for kids who didn't have them. Um, And we, this was more than a decade ago, I feel like we've created a lot of awareness in our community um, about the school supply issues. And so... It's craziness. Well, now everybody and their mother's doing a drive. Um, And it's, it's... you know, there's competition for stuff of buses and there's competition even for who's going to take backpacks to a school to kids. Yeah. And so we said, OK, we've done our job. You know, we, we're still involved in school supplies, but on a smaller scale. But we said, how can we get to these kids and to these families to serve them more? Right. You know, if if they can't afford a twenty five cent notebook at uh, back to school time. Well, that's a <laughs> symptom, not a cause. Right. But what what else is going on inside yeah. the house? Um, and so over time, um, we looked at, we started doing holiday stuff for kids, um, which is, it's, it's our feel good kind of a thing. Yeah. It's not our, it's not our primary mission. Um, but now we've, uh, started an intensive wraparound outreach in South Warren. Um, we define South Warren as basically between eight mile to nine and a half. Um, and then from, um, uh, Dequinder all the way over to Hayes. Okay. So we, we serve that entire area. Um, and what we're doing now is we are um, DHHS navigation partners. So we're helping people get their DH, uh, DHHS benefits. Which uh, is? Situated. Department of Health and Human Services. Okay. It used to be DHS, but the... Um, the Department of Homeland Security has taken that acronym, so uh, I have to get used to saying DHHS. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the damn world wildlife people that took the wrestling WWE thing away from them. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, most people still call you know the welfare office. Uh, <laughs> um, and so we're doing we're doing that kind of outreach. Um, one of the things that we find, especially in South Warren, right now is we have a very high uh, people living in extreme poverty. Um, We have a very high child abuse and neglect rate. Um, We have uh, uh, pretty high adult illiteracy. Um, And so being able to come in and help a family, and I, I never say to get the benefits that they're entitled to, but to get the benefits that they qualify for. Um, Because I don't, as much as I try to help people with their benefits, I don't buy into the whole entitlement mentality. Right. Um, and I'll tell people. Well, it's, just, it's just crazy when you see like, just uh, we talk food insecure. And I don't think anybody realizes like that's a real thing. In my area, you know? one in five kids are, are food insecure, mm. which means when, when they go home, there's not a reliable source of food. 
Um, so this is one of the things, you know, we're dealing with. Um, we have, um, like, a, one of our better success stories is we had a family that was, the, the dad had a close head injury, and I'm not too still convinced on his own literacy skills. And he was making um, $733 a month on his disability. And they had uh, him and th- three more kids, so four people in the house. <sighs> the rent on the house was $700. Mm. Oh. The man couldn't read the DHS paperwork, DHHS paperwork, to understand what he needed to send back, so he had no food stamps in the house. And so we were able to sit down and work with him, hand-holding, yeah. to, to do what needed to be done. So now we added 600 something dollars in food stamps to the house, which was needed. Yeah. You know? And then one of his kids had a disability. Well, he needed to do the disability paperwork, so we had to work on that, which was another like 700 something dollars a month. So we took this family basically from $733 to something like $2,500 a month in coordinated benefits, which were, which were deserved. You know, it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't like they were trying to milk the system. It's just nobody could read the paperwork. Well, and I guess that's the question is, so how – and I, maybe this speaks to how much work you have to do um, in that area. How much of it is lack of interest in adoption versus lack of awareness? In, in, in what way? Like when it comes to benefits and things like that. I mean like so I many – you know, when you, when you find yourself in these situations, you know, I, I would assume there are some people that just don't want any kind of public assistance because it's a perceived thing. Um, but then there are also probably people that just have no idea that it's out there. I see everything. I see the pride that, you know, well, I don't, I, I don't want to take it. You know, yeah. I, I have a, a man who came in uh, this past week. He was on public assistance before. And then he got a job, and for the last six, seven years, he, he worked, supported his family, and now this shop closed and he <laughs> lost his job in some way, and he's waiting to the very last minute to come in and apply. Well, you know, he's coming in, they need food stamps, their utilities are in danger of getting cut, so we have to do all this work, which is what we do. In a to, mad but, scramble. But try to get, you know, and it, it, it's, it's very much an intensive work, and it's, 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 it's truly crisis outreach. Um, and I always say, you know, if people fit inside a nice box, they wouldn't be our clients. Right. <laughs> you know, so we're always chasing everything that's outside of the box to try to coordinate help for families. Um, one of the biggest things that I have found, and I've been down there as an intensive for just over a year now, which means. <laughs> I was going to say, that's, that's part of this. And it's, you know, and, and we didn't really even touch on this yet is, you know, one of the reasons why we've felt really good about working with you guys is you your organization has like the slimmest margin of anything you know as far as you know what comes in versus what goes out yeah. to the point where you now live down there i live in the heart of it all um and it's uh, it's one thing to study poverty which i did and you you get an idea of poverty it's another thing to Okay, I'm gonna live out here, but drive down here, work, and go back home. It's a whole different experience when you're living it and you're in the middle of it. Um, because you know, I go into a shoppers market to get my groceries, and there's people in there who want to talk to me about their cases. Like, you know what? No, my my my, my hair is a wreck. I'm buying my whiskey, and <laughs> <laughs> leave me alone. It's Sunday morning. Oh yeah, well, you said you've had people that have come by the house at all hours of the day and night, and I mean it's. You've seriously dedicated yourself to this. Yeah, and in the beginning, I regretted it, and it's been a, <laughs> it, it, it's been a learning curve. But with that immersion really helped me get it um, and really understand because I often say that when the street lights come on, South Warren takes on a whole different um, uh, life of its own. And I'm not talking the crime and the rest because that happens even in the day. But just it, it, it's a whole different experience, you know, because here your next door neighbors or people blo- you know, a couple blocks over, you know, you're, you're seeing them at nine, ten o'clock at night and they need something. And you're, you're right there. Um, so it's been uh, I've learned more by living there than any textbook can teach me. I would imagine. Um, 
I, I didn't go in and I've never gone into a situation where I said, you know, this is what the community needs. I just listened and the, as, to the needs in the community and responded accordingly. Um, what a novel concept. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's novel because I'm one of the – I used to be one of those people who was like, well, this is what they need because the textbook said this is what they need. You know, it's not always it, – that's not always the case. Um, we have – you know, a lot of people think of uh, the people in South Warren as, you know, lazy. And, you know, that's that's not the case. See, and I'll be honest, like up until, you know, we started talking about this kind of stuff, I, I wasn't even aware there was a South Warren, you know, from a designation. I grew up in all. Warren. There's a, yeah, 696, it, the dividing is the dividing line. See, yeah. you know, he, he uses the ditch as, as a dividing line. The moat, we call it. The moat. The, the, the moat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I say nine and a half, but you see some pompous people <laughs> yeah us 14 milers you know? well, i'll be in conversations and people will say 696 is the new eight mile like on the regular yeah and that's true i had a donor who <laughs> lived at 11 mile in hoover which is worn it's and right by the ritz yeah wanted to bring a donation and said where are you located we said well we're about eight and a half in van dyke he says i don't go into that area can you come and get the check from me <laughs> Way to be committed. Two miles away. Yeah, two miles away. Yeah. Good. I'll meet you at the Ritz. Yeah. 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 So I mean, but this this is true. I mean, and there has been people, and I'm not going to call them out, but certain city officials who have been known on record to say that South Warren is dead, and have asked me how I feel working in a morgue. I'm like, Jeez. I'm like, if you that is a dereliction of duty, if you are a city official of a place. And Warren is not a small municipality. It's the third largest city in the state. Yeah, Yeah, it's the third largest city in the state. People forget that all the time. You know, that is a dereliction of of duty, and that's disgusting to me. Because to me... Why are you, uh, you know... Why are you even elected? Why are you doing that job? Well, because I'm an elected official for north of 696. But see, that's the... (laughs) I could get started. I'll save it for segment three. I could get more. Oh, boy. Step away from the mic. L. Brooks versus (laughs) Doug. So so talk to me about this latest thing you've got going on, this this whole 29-day house initiative. uh, Because it... uh, Like, honestly, I mean, that's... Everything you do with the money that you get in blows my mind because uh, you, you are incredibly resourceful with stuff. But when you were walking me through what the operational budget is on this, it, it it's mind boggling. I mean, it's it's crazy you can pull this off. But so, uh, what what is this? What's going on? Well, one of the things that I found is we do not have um, a lot of shelters in Macomb County, and the bed the shelter beds we do have for homeless people, especially families, are very limited. And if you're a homeless family with multiple kids trying to find a shelter with that amount of beds has been a challenge. And so oftentimes we have to put them up temporarily into a motel. And, you know, that can cost anywhere from eight to $900 a month to put right. somebody in a motel room. I mean, you're putting them inside a uh, Sid's hideaway bungalow, you know, with, with rooms by the hour. We'll leave the sheets on for you. Uh, <laughs> well, I have one where they got to bring their own. Oh, um, yeah. and stay classy. Weren't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, but the, um, uh, so they go into this room where somebody's chain smoked in that room for 50 years and there's only two queen beds and they can't cook in it. And maybe the small little refrigerator works or not. And that's expensive and I don't like it, you know, and we're f- right now we have, uh, for a variety of reasons, families becoming homeless, um, domestic violence, um, people who just screw up on their own. See, and you don't like bills. you're not you don't hear that. I mean, every, like because every, a, a lot of what you hear now is oh, everything's getting better and the economy's turning around and the area is just so fantastic. So I mean, like a, a lot of these stories get even more lost. Well, like last week, I I got a I got a case where uh, the lady had to escape domestic violence. She had four kids, and they ran. They l- literally left the house at like nine ten o'clock at night with whatever they had on. Two of the kids left without shoes, and they had to get the hell out of there, basically. Um, And it was a challenge to try to get them into a place. Um, We've had people who, yeah, they've 
got evicted on their own. You know, they didn't pay their bills for right. whatever reason. Not necessarily got of just because of poor spending, just because maybe something happened. And, yep. You know, they had to fix the car. Um, we also have the other challenge where, what, three years ago when uh, the city of Warren did the tax sales or the county did the tax sales, they packaged those up and these out-of-town investors bought up all these properties. But that's a good thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was good, but they didn't pay their property taxes for three years. Mm. And, well, this past October was the tax sale. So you've had tenants who have faithfully paid their rent every month, and now the house went into tax foreclosure, and now they're evicted. Wow, this has so many echoes. Yeah. It's so many echoes. We are so similar in so many ways. Yeah. What's interesting, that you say that something happens and they get evicted. They say that 56% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. With less than a thousand dollars in their bank account, and then twenty four percent have less than a hundred bucks to their name. Yeah. So it could it could happen to anybody. And people are quick to blame, you know, things like drugs or you know bad choices, but it it's not always that. I'm, well, you know, more, I'm not going to bitch about the car place having my car for three months anymore. <laughs> well, Hashtag first world problem. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, <laughs> I don't know if it was Warren or South Warren, but there was something where it's got the seventh largest uh, heroin usage in in the nation. Wow. Um, and, but the bulk of the people who I see who are becoming homeless or struggling, they're not users. Do I have users? I have users. In fact, I was telling you, Dave, yeah. about one of my ODs on Sunday morning. Oh. Um, but it, it does happen. But it's such a small percentage. Just like the people who try to think that the majority of people on, on welfare are, are, are scams. Scamming the system, yeah. Well, we know that it's about there's about a three percent fraud rate for welfare, and in that same fraud rate is even data entry errors that somebody, even the caseworker, you know, put something in wrong. So when you get down to it, they figure that it's probably just one percent. But that's what everybody loves to talk about. Well, because you, yeah, the, the, ten the, tweets are news these days, Dave. Yeah, exactly. Come on. But but that one percent has some great stories that are yeah. newsworthy. Um, but ninety percent of people who are on on who receive uh, public assistance or food stamps are children, elderly, disabled, or working people. So they actually have jobs, but not enough to support themselves. It still meet the income limits for 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 food stamps. So then, how is this? So how is what you're doing translating into solving that housing problem for them? Well, one of the one of the things we're doing is by helping people get their benefits in order. It's putting so instead of having to take money for food like out of their that thirty three dollars that was left in, after rent yeah now that now that money's able to the the food budget's able to go towards other bills you know um, for every five dollars in food stamps that we generate we, um, we that get people receive we generate nine dollars in economic activity because see in our area. We have people who they don't – transportation, they, they walk. They go to Shopper's Market, right? Right. And so now they're going to be buying more food at Shopper's Market. Shopper's Market is going to keep somebody employed. Maybe pay yeah, the or have to bring somebody new in. Yeah. And now you're buying more food from there. So they're going to have to use a supplier, which is going to help with the over-the-road people to bring food in and warehouses. And what, I think for every billion dollars in food stamps, 3,300 farm jobs are created. Well – when I did the math, because I'm a numbers guy, just our work in South Warren alone has probably created four farm jobs this year. Okay. Um, so it shows that even though we're here, we, we have a greater impact you know, right. on, on the economy. Um, so that's one positive uh, out of all of this. The, where we're at now is going back, we don't have enough shelter beds and – if a family's got to go into a motel, the money that they have in their pocket, now they're paying a motel to stay at. Right. So the 29-day house concept is where they come in. They could stay for free for that basically a month, but they could save up a down payment to be able to get in another place of their own. Yeah, or a first month's rent, deposit, that sort of thing. And, yep. and we have landlords we can work with that are would be willing to work with the people we serve um, in different programs to help within that time. But right now, like this mom who had to leave the house with all the kids, 
She also left where she only had a small income left of her own because she was leaving the abusing spouse who had the bigger chunk of the money. Right. And you could say child support, but that's going to take forever. Yeah. That's not going to help her get housed right now. Um, and so she was able to get into that house. It's better than the motel that, you know, chain smoking or that chain smoked room. Right. And so they're in a more cozy environment with three meals a day, which they're not getting at the motel. And it, it just it, it just really helps in the long run. Um, we know that we could do that house for uh, it's about twelve thousand a year um, to, to get it together um, with the other supports that would be coming in. And so, as I was talking to you, I said, "People, are like, go get grants." And I don't. I've never been a fan. And I've always yeah. told you this of corporate grants because they're sterile. They don't care, and sometimes you have to jump through hoops you don't want to have to jump through. So we divide it by 365, and it came out to $33 a day. And so we said if we could find 365 people to each sponsor a day, we could pull this house off. Okay, any of you out there listening, we've had more than 1,000 of you at our Majestic events. We've had more than 2,000 of you that have found jobs at our events. Listen carefully. Don't make me start nagging and hunting you down. <laughs> Neri just shot me a, a link to the worst, basically, drug cities in America. And for the worst cities for drug overdoses, Warren, Michigan is seventh in the country. That's crazy. Detroit and Flint are down the list a little bit. But Dayton, Ohio, number one. Uh, Should be three in Ohio in the top three. Right? Yeah, the Cincinnati, Dayton in the top ten, and Toledo in the top ten. Detroit is looks like twelve fish. Flint looks like fifteen twenty. That's crazy. So thirty three bucks a day is basically what this boils down to. Yeah, to make this happen, um, and people can pick a date. So if the date's available and you have a significant date you want to do an in memory of an honor of, all right, you could say, okay, here's thirty three dollars, and can I please have March fifth? And if it's available, you can have it. If not, I'll charge you sixty six for it. <laughs> <laughs> Got a premium dates, yeah. yeah that's right, that's right. <laughs> and for ninety nine, we'll let you come clean the house. You can have the day. holiday weekend. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> no, just to put that in perspective, that's what I'm going to pay to Uber to Mark's place and back on Thursday. Yeah, and my God, you can take care of a family, or you, I can get drunk, or I can do both. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, we have the luxury of being able to do both. <laughs> exactly. And for sixty six dollars, we'll give you your own fifth. No, oh, you will. <laughs> oh. Paid for by Dave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there it is. It's <laughs> like it, no, it's like PBS. Give a hundred, and we'll give you this DVD set of Flash Gordon from the nineteen thirties. Right. <laughs> so, and I know um, for those that can't make it, we've got the link out in the Facebook event uh, and on the blast that went out today. Uh, people can donate in advance. Um, we do encourage people to do that. Uh, hell, I mean, even if you, even if you are planning on making it, you know, you can do that and then not have to worry about, you know, cash donations and that kind of stuff. Um, you are going to be on hand, uh, yes. with us Thursday night again. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, I, <laughs> the shit matters people. I mean, there's no, there's no other, like there's no, I know this isn't us one one Like we don't really tend to get heavy, um, on topics very often, but like this shit is right in our own backyard and it's such an easy thing to help. I mean, it's, it's literally like, you know, Bob said it's an Uber ride. It's dude. It's, it's not even one of our bar tabs on a bar crawl night at, at one bar. Um, this, this absolutely is something that we should be able to help uh, kick into high gear and, and, and at least get a year rolling on this. And one of my, one of my biggest hopes, and I told you this and, I tend to dream big, but I also have faith. Um, is hopefully we raise enough between now and Thursday to be able to announce the official opening on Thursday. Yeah, um, we do have the support of the local school district. Um, we have, in fact, uh, two. <laughs> I think two or three of the people on the board are actually work somehow in the district because that's where we get a lot of our families from. Um, within the school district, the um, we it, it's just very important, and you know, and one thing we have to remember is this isn't just a home for homeless people; it's they're always going to have children. So you know, it could, it's mainly going to be women and children. Yeah. Um, from time to time, men do get custody, 
And I always wonder, wow, what does she do so well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not like the system is really geared that way. Yeah, yeah it's like, whoa, you know? Um, and sometimes I look, I was like, so the judge had to pick the lesser of the two, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and, but the bulk of my people, you know, are, are, are good. The people we serve, are, they're, they're well-meaning. And to be able to to help them in in any way, it's great. Awesome. So, um, so yeah, we'll see everybody there Thursday night. So, yeah, how do we uh, – the, to the new thing, I know that we were trying to go to what, – what's the website now for uh, – to donate to the uh, – it's kind of a – it's a weird URL. I don't even want to try to get a, give it out over the air just because, I mean, it's it's a little kludgy. Um, but, I mean, like I said, it's on the Facebook event listing. You can find it on itnd.com uh, in the mail blast that we did out. Uh, yeah, because, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's you know, ubm.wildapricot.org slash page. We'll, we'll put it on the page. Twitters and the things yeah, and the places yeah, yeah. and the so, stuff. Yeah, I mean, so it's, it, it's out there. Um, Our technology it, budget is – very weak, right? I, I, yeah, which I feel like we should be able to do something with and make that easier to get to. Yeah, exactly. I, I think we may do that before the end. We of know night. a couple IT guys, yeah. Michael. <laughs> yeah. Wait, you think? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Michael, appreciate spending time with us. Look forward to seeing you on Thursday, and uh, we'll be back with Doctor Hook and Sven from Daily Detroit. This is the IT and the D Show, and we'll be right back.